basketball. This week on USF Basketball, we go behind the scenes on game day. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Coach Antigua grants us exclusive access to the sights and sounds of Division I college basketball. The first team that comes out with energy and fight and throws the first punch usually wins. Usually wins. Now, your jobs are you're prepared to go win the game. Come out with energy, come out with fight, and talking. As you get yourself going, you talk to each other, you get out of your own mind, you get out of your own way, and you're helping each other get engaged. The message that you're trying to get across to the team is the same message that you've been trying to uh, prepare them with in practice. Um, concentrating on us, our effort, our intensity, our attention to detail, and our focus. And can we do that for 40 minutes? So all the information that you're giving them is you've, you're reinforcing in a short period of time, but it's the stuff that we've worked on in the days prior to the game. One circle! One circle! One circle! Getting good stats consistently leads to success. And um, stats obviously, you know, we want to score more than they do. We don't want to give them extra opportunities by turning the ball over or giving them offensive rebounds. So those stats are also important. We'll learn about New York City basketball and why that's had such an impact on your Bulls. I mean, New York City, for me growing up, you know, in the playgrounds, it's just, I think I always tell people it, it gave me an edge, you know, because in New York City, when you go, especially back then, it's all over now. The game has grown so much, but there was a time where New York City was the big place and, you know, kind of, you know, everybody looked to New York like, wow. But New York gave me a competitive edge because every time you stepped on the court, you know, you had to, you had to have your A game. You know, even as a pro, I played in all the park tournaments and everything, but I knew I couldn't lose. You know, I couldn't lose that one-on-one -on -one battle because they would be talking about it the next day. So that gave me a, 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 a real good competitive edge. So I've always had to compete. And I think that's what New York was always about. You know, we had the flamboyant guards, the guards that like to take it to the basket, be creative, uh, but also it was a competitiveness. And you had to compete every, every day. I think New York basketball is, like everyone say, the mecca of basketball, just because it's, I guess, our first sport. And only sport is it's a sport everyone plays because it's a park on every block, literally. So it's, it's, it's some form of a basketball court. The minute you come downstairs and touch a street corner, you look maybe to your left or right, you'll find a basketball court and kids playing out there. We'll also take a look back at the Bulls in action. For the defending national champs, nice entry pass and catch by Nehemiah Morillo, the junior out of the Dominican Republic. Tested outside shot, Morillo rises and hits. Nehemiah Morillo, the junior college transfer, much like the Antigua, for the Dominican Don't go anywhere, more USF basketball when we return. Sitting in that in the uh, in the locker room prior to the game, uh, while the staff is out warming up the players, one of the things that you're going through is you're meditating, uh, you're praying, and you're trying to go through your uh, the things that you may have to uh, make decisions about. How do you want to start the game defensively? How do you want to start offensively? Who do you want to try to get going? Who do you need to try to get going right away? those kind of things. So you're just going through uh, a bevy of things in your mind prior to the game. You try to connect with, uh, with the players. You ask the staff how they look out there. Um, if there's anyone that, that we need to maybe jumpstart to get going, uh, challenge them a little bit at times or encourage a little bit. And then you go into, again, preparing them 
for what they're about to face, giving them the tools that um, they need to have in order to go out and try to have success on the court. All right, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. Okay, Coach mentioned starters are the same <clears throat> as we thought. AC, you got Harrison. Corey, you got Woodard. Both of them are lefty, okay? If in transition you guys get matched up, you paired up differently, it doesn't matter. You can just know the personnel. Uh, Troy, you're starting off with Curtis. Driving, 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 and he gets in there to rebound, so you gotta hit him and go uh, get us some boards, okay? Chris, you got Smith, and Ruben, you got Wright to start off with, okay? The message that you're trying to get across to the team is the same message that you've been trying to uh, prepare them with in practice. Um, concentrating on us, our effort, our intensity, our attention to detail, and our focus. And can we do that for 40 minutes? So all the information that you're giving them is you, you're reinforcing in a short period of time, but it's the stuff that we've worked on in the days prior to the game. Do it again tonight. Plus 10 on the boards. Not so much, but let's get it. Tonight's a good night to do that, okay? Plus 13 on the assist. Plus 13 on the assist. We put it down to eight. We've gotten to seven. Three stops in a row. Let's get eight, three stops in a row. Those are the numbers that we, we talk about uh, for every practice in every game. We want to hold teams under 40% from the floor. We want to be plus 10 uh, on the rebounds and plus 13 on the assist. That, though, those numbers are small indicators as to what's happened during the game, whether we're engaged, whether we're listening to the game plan, executing the defensive game plan, offensive game plan, how physical we're being uh, in terms of finishing off possessions, which leads to defensive rebounds or offensive rebounds. All right, let's go. Let's settle up. Let's settle up. As a, for a young team, you try to have to give them things that they can digest things that they can hold on to, things that they can identify a number with, the kind of effort that they're putting out so that uh, you, you keep them consistent with that. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, listen. Get yourself going, those guys that are starting, make sure you're getting more shots. Get shot. Well, after we pray, we come together and, and uh, we say together because anything that we're gonna face positive or negative, we have to do it together. And it's something that we say every time we huddle, whether it be before game, practice, after practice, after the game. The process of leaving the locker room onto the court, there's, um, you're taking those steps and you're going through your mind again, um, the things that you want to try to talk to the team about right before they get out on the court again. What points again are you going to re-emphasize and you're, you're trying to go through what's going to be your first offensive play and how are you going to defend. And that's the kind of the process I go through every game. One of the questions that I ask my staff before every game, from my assistants to my video folks to the managers at times if they're around, what, what should we run? What's the first play we should run? First play. Oh. That's my thought process as well. I like to get different input. I like to get different suggestions. Um, some guys say the same thing every time. Coach Sergio, get a drop, get a drop every time he wants First it. Play. He wants it back door. Drop. So he gives me the same one every time. Other guys give me different things depending on what they feel. And I just like to get a feel, one, for what they're thinking, and two, to let them know that, you know, I'm going to value their input. Go! 
Good, 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 good. Three quarter, Ruben. Early, Ruben. Early, Ruben. Early, Ruben. Black, black. Good, good, good. Box. As far as the coaching technique, I think you ha you have to you got to be genuine to yourself, to your own personality. I think um, kids can detect when you're not being yourself. And all I try to do is be myself. I keep in mind that it's not about me, it's about how do our staff, how do I and our staff help these kids to have success? How do we put them in a situation where they can have success? Watch the baseline! Hands, Ruben! Travel! Get ahead, charge! Yeah! When you're dealing with challenges and adversity in, in a season or in life, you can't let that become overwhelming. The only thing that you can control is how you respond to that and how you go about your, your day in terms of preparing for success. You don't worry, you, you're gonna have ups and downs, but you kinda have to consistently keep plugging away at the rock. You got to keep hammering away at the rock because you never know when that rock is going to break. So we stay consistent with our effort, we stay consistent with our discipline and with our focus and over a long haul you hope that um, in one of those instances that you break that rock. USF Basketball Run With Us is brought to you by Florida Prepay, Canes Furniture, Tampa General Hospital, UPS and USF Health. Don't go anywhere, more USF basketball when we return. Our highlights this week come from the XL Center, Hartford, Connecticut, the Bulls and the defending champion, Yukon Huskies. It was a breakout game for Nehemias Morillo. The junior from the Dominican Republic came in averaging nine points per game. He doubled that in this one. Bulls were without Chris Perry, but Bo Ziegler was there to help. He had seven points in 23 minutes. But the Huskies have a lot of weapons, especially from the outside. UConn hit eight of 17 three-point attempts, including four by Ryan Boatwright. But still, the Bulls were not intimidated. Stolen there by Collins, up the floor. Good speed, and the dunk with a right hand. Wow. The Bulls had some long-range shooting as well. Freshman Troy Holston continues to refine his game, and the dependable Nehemias Murillo hits three of his 18 points. Still, the Bulls were down at the break. In the second half, the Huskies began to dominate in the paint. The Bulls missed the inside presence of Chris Perry, and UConn out-rebounded USF by 17. But the Bulls kept battling and kept making shots. Throughout the second half, they drew closer and closer. Ruben Guerrero with a strong move to the basket off the glass, but it was the Bulls' defense that brought them back in this game. Quick hands forced turnover after turnover by the Huskies. Ruben Guerrero with a quick move here to knock the ball away, and that led to free throw opportunities for Nehemias Murillo. Corey Allen Jr. scored off the glass, and that led to a big moment in the game from Anthony Collins. Samuels passes four consecutive turnovers for UConn. And a messy second half. Collins hits a three straight on. And the Bulls are within three. South Florida rising up shorthanded. With the Bulls now applying pressure, the Huskies responded. Rodney Purvis hit a three-pointer. And then moments later, with the Bulls poised to attack, a sudden blocked shot leading to a runout, the Huskies extend their lead and the Bulls look for answers. Once again, USF turned to their defense. They picked up one of their seven steals, this time by Corey Allen, and Nehemias Murillo finished the play on the other end. But as the game wore down, the Huskies continued to hit. Ryan Boatwright was deadly behind the arc, scoring 28 points for the game. And near the game's end, Daniel Hamilton added one more three-pointer 
as the Huskies went on to victory. Still to come on USF Basketball. New York City basketball um, is very nitty gritty. Um, everybody is like more physical in New York. I remember growing up playing a lot of a lot of fouls, hard fouls, and just getting like sacrificing your body with with whatever, jumping out of bounds. I mean, pushing guys. Like, I mean, it's really it's a very grimy game up in New York. And when I moved here to Florida, it was it was very different. Don't go anywhere, more USF basketball when we return. New York City basketball is um Depends who you ask. If you ask a New Yorker, it's probably the, it's the best basketball there is. We've got great basketball, great guards, um, skilled, a lot of showboat, a lot of aggressiveness, uh, a mentality, a tough mental approach to the game. And so if you ask anybody else from any, other way, any uh, part of the country, I don't think they see it the same way. City for me growing up, you know, in the playgrounds, it's just, I think I always tell people it, it gave me an edge, you know, because in New York City, when you go, on, especially back then, it's all over now. The game has grown so much, but there was a time where New York City was the big place, and you know, kind of, you know, everybody looked to New York like, wow. But New York gave me a competitive edge because every time you stepped on the court, you know, you had to, you had to have your A game. You know, even as a pro, I played in all the park tournaments and everything. But I knew I couldn't lose. You know, I couldn't lose that one-on-one -on -one battle because they would be talking about it the next day. So that gave me a, 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 a real good competitive edge. So I always had to compete. And I think that's what New York was always about. You know, we had the flamboyant guards, the guards that like to take it to the basket, be creative, uh, but also it was a competitiveness. And you had to compete every day. Every day. New York City basketball, boy, I tell you, it's a, it's a state of mind, okay? New York, um, you gotta be tough to survive. Great competition all throughout the five boroughs. Uh, each each place kind of has its own bragging rights style of play. You know, you, you, you're growing up playing in the street. That's number one. It's street ball. You got you got to go get, earn your rep. No one knows who you are. You got to win to stay on the court. You lose, you got to sit, and you kind of get this mentality of being a tough, physical, uh, not not great shooters like they're from Indiana or other places because you're usually outdoors and you can't shoot. They're usually driving the ball to the basket. So you got a lot of guards that can really handle the ball. Pavements are not usually even, you got rocks and stuff, you, you gotta learn how to dribble the ball in different types of terrain. So um, it's just more of a mentality of, of survival. Um, so there's so much competition, such a large city. You know, the passive doesn't, don't make it, and if you don't fight for what you want, you know, you're gonna get left behind. And I think you see that in the style of play and the coaching and the, and the, and the competition. We recruit New York City because of our relationships. And, um, you know, we want to recruit anywhere where we have relationships. It just so happens that obviously with a, a majority of our staff being from New York and having those relationships back, not just in New York, but in the East Coast, you know, we go to, we tend to recruit where those relationships are at. For the latest on Bulls basketball, log in to GoUSFBulls.com. Follow Coach Antigua on Twitter at USF Coach O. Follow USF Basketball on Twitter at USF MBB. This is Bulls Basketball.